Greetings viewers and welcome to another episode of ETCG Dad's Truck Build. And in this episode or series of episodes, I'm going to be dropping the front end two inches using drop spindles, but I'm also going to take the opportunity to remove the front control arms, replace all the bushings, paint everything and put it all back together. Also, I have an idler arm here uh, on this side that's loose that I think is going to tighten up the uh, steering if I replace it. So I'm going to take the opportunity to basically refresh the front suspension and drop it two inches. Here's a bushing kit that I got for the entire truck. I got this from Summit. I also used it in the rear on the leaf spring bushings. Uh, it also has all the stuff I need for that. It also has body bushings, which I'm not going to install those right now. Uh, here are my drop spindles, uh, also from the same company. This is part of that same kit, and these are two inch spindle drops, and I'll be able to show you more clearly uh, how this does this after I get the old ones off. Also from Summit, these are Bilstein shocks for the front, and I will be able to run these. Even though I'm dropping the front end two inches, I'm doing a spindle drop, which means the suspension travel is the same. Therefore, I can use uh, stock size shocks. I've chosen these Bilsteins. I'm also going to take the opportunity to install these steel braided brake lines on the front while I'm at it and there's a new brand new set of uh, rotors slotted rotors in here along with new brake pads back here on this bench I have a set of brand new coil springs for the front I figure 30 year old coil springs and I'm going to take them out anyway why not replace them here's the idler arm I spoke of that I was going to replace uh, ball joints both upper and lower I have new bearings for the front as well as new bearing seals I got all this stuff from my local Smythe here are the part numbers for the other parts mentioned I'll link all this stuff in the description to make it easy for you to find I'm going to start by, since I have the truck on the ground, uh, especially on the shocks, hitting things with penetrating oil to get things moving. I'm also going to hit the uh, control arm. I'm going to start with the shock nut, and it could just start spinning, and if it does, well, I'm just going to get out my torch and cut it. It did exactly what I thought it would do. I get to do one of my first under hood modifications. None of this is gonna be used, so it can go away. This is strapped down. It's held on by a 3 8 or 10 millimeter up under here. Mm, that was harder than it needed to be. Ooh, almost. Holy cow, can you believe that just worked? Makes me wanna go try the other side, cause that just worked. I'm putting some tension on it, so I'm pulling this over like this and hopefully. I'm gonna try an alternative method. I think a little bit of heat will take it the rest of the way. Come on, get down on there. You've pissed me off. bushing your services are no longer required the other side was easier I need to get the wheels off I want to make this sort of pretty under here, so I'm gonna paint things. I'm not replacing any of the tie rods or anything, but I feel like taking this all off as an assembly would be great. Also getting the stabilizer bar out of the way since I've got new bushings here and new end links here. So I'm gonna take the stabilizer bar off first and the entire steering linkage. Notice how this side is lower than this side. So this frame is different from side to side. So this one has a steering box, this one does not. And it's got this little extender piece hanging down. 
Those appear to be uh, 10 millimeter or possibly 3 8 Once again, with the links, it may be a cutting thing. It's nice working on the front. It's a shorter walk to the tools. I never expected that to happen. I guess lightning can strike twice in the same place. Thank you, Dad, for taking such good care of this truck. I feel a lot more stable. I just do. I'm gonna get this cotter pin. And I was just sort of thinking out loud. I might just replace these inner and outer tie rods while I'm at it. Replacing this idler arm anyway, which you can probably see just from this is moving up and down a bit. It's getting loose up here in this joint. This guy here is 22 millimeter. locked in by the centerpiece. So I have to turn the wheel to get it out. I gotta go farther. Or I can just do something I'm gonna do anyway and take the freaking idler arm off. I'm gonna have to take the splash shield off anyway and this is gonna help me gain access to some of those fasteners for the idler arm. At least I hope it is. Uh, I have a better tool. That's one way to do it. I have more of these. Looks like I'll need them. Ooh, there's a hole I can see through. Oh, I'm losing my torque. I just put the nuts back on these so that they're less apt to fall back inside. Try to take out these lower shock mounts. They're sort of half inch, sort of. Yeah, maybe. Ah, oh, yes and no, dang it. Was curling right now. I'm going to remove the calipers now and I'm going to do something they say not to do and that's let it hang by the brake hose. Why? Because I'm replacing the brake hose. What do I care? These are 3 8 Allen head. Might as well do it to this side too. I'm now going to remove the front rotors because it's going to make those spindles a lot lighter. In the process, I'm going to show you a little trick. 
on how to deal with tapered roller bearings. If you're replacing seals, I want to save this part because I'm keeping it. Oh, look, we machined the inside of it. The cotter pin did. That's cool. I wonder if we played that on a record player if it would mean something. I did a whole video about this. Might be helpful to you. Wait a second. That's not a cotter pin. That's like a finishing nail. <laughs> no wonder. <laughs> well, what I might just do, knock off the nail part and just pull it through this way. Weird. I am not reusing this. <laughs> All right, well, here's your trick. If you need to do the rear seal, which you should whenever you remove these. First, take out the outer bearing nicely. Say hello, outer bearing, and set it aside. Now, if you want to remove the seal and the rear bearing, because you want to replace the seal, put the nut back on just like that. You take the rotor, and when you take it off, make sure it's riding on the spindle and pull it towards you. Like, and there's your bearing and everything else. And that makes that whole assembly lighter. We're going to need our backing plate. Sweet. Excellent. Ah, that looks like an actual cotter pin. Oh, this is a no-no. Somebody tightened this. Like, I should be able to... Mm. Yeah, because this is only... When you tighten these down, it's just like a... Boop. You don't want any preload on these bearings. That's okay. Bearings are getting replaced. Rotors are getting replaced. Seals are getting replaced. But the only thing uh, coming back is this nut and that dust cover and that washer. I'm going to undo the ball joints, both upper and lower. It requires some cotter pin removal. I know you can just run these out and just turn the nut over the top of the cotter pin and just break the cotter pin off on the inside of whatever it is. And I'm replacing the ball joints, so it's like, eh, so what? I just like to get them loose. I've had issues in the past trying to get them out. It's just a personal thing. But there's lots of ways to do it with the same thing. <coughs> Sorry. Don't want to take these all the way out because this guy's waiting to kill you. I'm just going to get him spun up past the end of the stud so that when I knock it loose, it'll come off easy. All right, that's past the rusty part. Got me a new coil spring compressor. Got it from JMB Tool Sales. I'll link it in the description, but there is said part number. Once again, it'll be linked in the description. But this guy should uh, fit up through the bottom and hold that spring in place so that it doesn't try and kill us. We don't want to die today. At least if we do die, we'll do it on camera. That'll get the views. Helps prevent rust too. This one goes up inside. This one goes underneath. Just making sure it's all hooked together. If it's not, make sure it's hooked together. See that? Means we're compressed. Means we shouldn't die today. I'm gonna to take the opportunity while things are still together and not moving around to remove the rivets on the upper ball joint. I've got my spring compressed and everything else, but this is held in place right now and I'm gonna air chisel these off. Very similar to what I did with the rivets on the rear release spring. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna cut the tops and then chisel off the tops 
And that should be that. <laughs> By the way, there's no way this ball joint can fall through here because this whole top is holding it on. So I'm not concerned that it's gonna come flying apart on me. <laughs> but I am gonna switch the face shield because there's a lot of junk flying around. I'm using my earplugs. Now I'm going to loosen the uh, nut on the lower ball joint. You can see that we don't have spring tension on it. So as long as we're gentle, it should come off. Maybe we'll have to loosen those <laughs> bolts on the control arm. There's our spindle. These are 24 millimeter. I'm gonna loosen them because I don't want this whole thing to come just dropping down and the coil spring to go flying out and possibly come apart. Uh, therefore, uh, I'm gonna loosen this one in the back a little bit and then the one in the front a little bit and just try to do it a little bit at a time. That's why I was standing over here, and that's why I put it in the vise. Upper spring perch, we don't want to lose that. In fact, we probably want to order more of these. Oh, that's heavy. I figure it's time to get this brake hose off. These are 11. And on the other side, I'm assuming, also some form of 11 millimeter. Those were 21 millimeter. And these have cams on them. See how like the bolt is like half flat in such a way? And these cams are so you can adjust the alignment. Both camber and caster are adjusted with these two uh, upper bolts. They're super special, so don't lose them. One side done. This was in the way the whole time on the other side, so I'm just gonna take it off first. Once again, replacing the brake lines. I am not concerned about letting it hang, letting a caliper hang by the brake hose. I'm just gonna take the opportunity to knock the inner uh, bolts of the lower control arm loose now, because I know that's gonna allow the coil spring to come out easy when I'm ready for it. Did that top one just break loose? Yeah, that was the top one. <laughs> Weird how I'm hitting the bottom and the top comes loose. Please go into my shock hole.
are my cutoff wheels giving out on me? Get the right wrench, Eric. Mm. It's starting to spin, which is what I was trying to avoid. Why do I not like this? Good reason not to like it. So don't trust these spring compressors either. naked on both sides. Oh yeah, that there's stuff that came off. It's time for spindle talk with Eric the car guy. These are the stock spindles that were on there. You can see where this uh, pin comes out and it's sort of close to the ball joint down here. Now my new drop spindles, see how the spindle is moved up two inches and cast up here instead. So everything else about the suspension will be the same, just the location of this will change. Therefore, I can keep the shocks and everything. But this will clearly illustrate the difference uh, between spindles and show you what a spindle drop does. And we're back. I have covered the truck in its cover. I have also covered the other vehicles in the shop and taken the ones that, are, that I don't want to get paint or dust on outside. We're ready to get to work and we're about to make a big mess, but at the end, everything's gonna be nice and clean and painted and ready to go all back together. That's the goal. Let's get started. I want to reuse a lot of these parts. Uh, so what I will do is get some of the big chunks out like i'll reuse this nut i'm not going to be reusing the bearings or the seals or anything like that but these washers and these bearing caps and this stuff i do want to reuse Ugh, big lob of grease there so i had this idea maybe it's not a new idea but i got this old colander that i'm just gonna put in like this take these parts and others like it and just turn the thing on and let it run while I work. And that will allow the uh, solvent to work on the grease and everything else that's on here while I do other stuff. It's terribly exciting, right? On these backing plates, there's a little rubber seal. Rubber doesn't do too well in my parts washer, so I'm gonna remove that for now while I use clean this. Next, I want to clean all this stuff with the frame and everything else, but these calipers are so in the way, so I'm going to remove these on both sides now so I can get access to all this other stuff easier. I'm going to use the trick that I talked about earlier in this series where I'm going to depress the brake pedal all the way to the floor. That way the master cylinder doesn't bleed out while I remove these components. Now, I don't want to push the pistons out on the calipers or anything, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock these uh, lines loose from the back and let it drip out that way the pressure's got some place to go and i'm going to do that on both sides oops we just don't want the piston to come out of the caliper when i do this just going to depress the pedal slowly to the floor or as far as it'll go and wedge it in a place just like this. And this should prevent any air from getting in the system and from it to bleeding out entirely. With a brake pedal depressed, the brake lights will be on the entire time and I don't want to drain the battery. And this is something I could have done a while ago, but I wasn't doing any welding or anything, so I wasn't too worried about it. 
Uh, now I'll take this the rest of the way out. So you weren't supposed to bleed out anymore, Mr. Master Cylinder. You look like you're bleeding out still, like a lot. While I'm here, I'm also going to remove the brake hoses. These seem to be 14 millimeter on this vehicle. This cap will help keep dust and debris. Uh, I want to get one that fits a little tighter, but I want to keep dust and debris out of the brake system. Terribly exciting. This is one of the caps for the bleeder valve. I think this will work too. There's a flap here on this side that wasn't on the other side. I'm going to remove it. As long as I have these here, I'm going to push the piston pin and take the brake pads out because I will be reusing my calipers. I like these brackets. They locate the brake hose on the control arm really nicely, but the new brake hoses don't come with any of this. So I want to see if I can transfer this over. And while I'm here, might as well just check. Yeah, they're the same length, so we're good on that part. What I want to do is I'm going to cut a section of this out large enough that will accommodate this smaller brake hose going in. And then when it's on the car, the zip ties will take me the rest of the way but I'll still be able to use these brackets, which is what I want. Um, thinking about that much. I was thinking I'd have to cut this, but I think I cut it in just such a way to where I can just peel this out. Yep. Ooh, check that out. I was already compromised a little bit. Well, that's gonna work awesome. And I think what I can do is I can, after reconditioning this, I can squish this down. Uh, well, maybe I should do that now uh, before I paint it. That way it fits the hose a little better. I don't want to go too much. Although, it's not cooperating. <laughs> so, oh, maybe there's a little bit. Yeah, that just fits in there, which is what I wanted. I might squish it down more when I do final assembly, but I know that I'll be able to hold it in the rest of the way with some zip ties. I decided to come in here and take off the rough edge that was left by the cutoff wheel with a file just to smooth things out so it doesn't harm the brake lines. I noticed that it just scratched the outer covering of the uh, my practice line as I was putting it in there, but now I don't feel anything dangerous at all. I'm gonna clean these off a little brake clean to get any fine particulate dust and stuff off of here so that it's ready for paint. I'm just using brake clean. That seems to be going everywhere. Stop doing that. To the spray pile. I'm also gonna prep the calipers for a little paint. I don't know if these will come off or not. I can just do this on the bench. It's really awkward in here. They are now ready for cleaning. I'm just gonna take the uh, brake hose attachments out. I'm pretty sure the bleeders work, but I'm gonna make sure they work now. 
Uh, yeah, they work fine. Now, I'm not going to run these through the parts washer. Why? Because Mineral Spirits eats rubber. You know what that is? That's a rubber seal on the outside of the caliper piston. So I'm going to knock the rust off with this wire brush as much as I can. And then I'll clean them up with brake clean. The dual piston calipers are available for this, and I have considered them, but they are 600 bucks for the pair. So for now, I'm gonna try these. Staying dirty today, my friends. Staying dirty. couple of things I don't want to get paint on. I don't want to get paint in here and I don't want to get paint in here and I'm gonna mask off the bleeder because actually I can pop that guy out and take it over to the wire wheel and make it shiny. Now I'm going to mask off those areas where I don't want paint to get into. It's always a good day when the masking tape actually sticks. I'm not a painter as you can probably tell but I can do it when I need to. Ooh, wait, I got a better idea. Every time I use these, I thank my friend Shane Craig up in Alaska for sending them to me. These are plugs that he uses working on diesels out in the, uh, the bush, basically. I'm gonna say that guy's ready for some paint. I don't care about painting in here so much. You'll never see it. Only you and I will know. That saves me some time. Thanks, Shane. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I'm super happy. That just saved me a bunch of time. I'm gonna throw a coat of paint on these and let it sit while I do other stuff. This is uh, caliper paint. Might as well get these brackets while I'm here too. They're here. And this is getting the chassis roll bar paint. Well viewers, that's gonna be the end of part one of the rebuilding of the front suspension on ETCG Dad's truck. But settle in, this one's gonna be kind of a long haul here. Uh, in fact, the rough cut of this little mini series within this video series was about 12 hours long so there was a bunch of editing that needed to be done to cut things down to what you see here. Uh, there is available a part one and part two all is one video available to premium members of my website. I'll put a link to that down in the description. Part two of this will be posted within a week uh, if it is already available and it's past that time where I posted that that link will be posted right at the top down below. Uh, also down in the description there will be links to parts, tools, additional videos and information if you had any questions while watching this video. So please check the description if you have questions. If you have automotive questions not covered in this video, I ask you head to ericthecarguy.com. You guessed it, also linked in the description. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Do those things that help make a living. Super appreciate that. And uh, of course, be safe, have fun, stay dirty, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.